Hey, what's up everybody? It's James with Boxcar Visual and car logos are some of the most recognizable shapes on the planet. Their origin stories of how the badges came to be are all over the place and a lot of them are really interesting. So here's a crash course of some of the most popular car logos and how they were created in no particular order other than alph alphabetically. I did it alphabetically. Acura is Honda's luxury brand, and the name Acura is made up, but it comes from the word accurate. So actually, I don't know why Acura doesn't have two C's in it, because I think that would be more accurate. But anyways, the logo looks like an A, but it's not. If you ask Acura, it is a stylized caliper with a circle around it, and a caliper is a device that measures things precisely or accurately. Accurate, Acura. Alfa Romeo was founded in Milan, Italy, and their logo pays homage to that. It's split right down the middle. The left side is the red cross with the white background. That's the flag of Milan. And then the right side is a snake eating a baby, which is also called the Biscayone or the grass snake. And it was part of the family crest of the Visconti family that ruled Milan a thousand years ago. Aston Martin is named after one of the founders, Lionel Martin, and a hill in England that he drove up called Aston Hill. The wings have nothing to do with either of those. They were strictly a style choice to represent speed and agility or something. <laughs> the four rings of the Audi logo are not an Olympic logo knockoff. They represent four different auto manufacturers that merged together in 1932 and they became the Auto Union. And the Auto Union uh, was bought by Mercedes. The Mercedes sold it to Volkswagen and it was in the 1960s when Volkswagen decided they were going to stop calling them the Auto Union and go by one of the names of the original four manufacturers and they picked Audi. BMW. Airplane propeller, right? No. No, it's not. That's legitimately a myth. It's a Bavarian flag, and the black circle around it was borrowed from the original company logo, a company called Rap. BMW really hasn't gone out of their way to correct the myth about the airplane propeller because they did make airplanes, and it makes a lot of sense, and honestly, I think they wish they had thought of it first. Buick's logo is based on the founder's Scottish family coat of arms, which was a shield. The original logo was just his shield on the front of the car, and then they changed it to three different shields in 1959 to represent the three different models of cars that Buick sold. But then when those models were discontinued, they were like, oh shoot, doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. So it became a hawk for a while, but then they brought back the three shields and just simplified it. So now it's three metal shields. The Cadillac logo is a family crest and a family name, but it's not the family name of the founder of the car company. It's a family name and family crest of the founder of Motown itself. It's the guy that founded Detroit in 1701, and uh, I'm going to pronounce his name perfectly right now. It was Le Sour Antoine de la Monte Cadillac. <laughs> The nickname for this logo is the bow tie, and it's absolutely one of the most recognizable silhouettes ever. It's right up there with the Nike swoosh. And the origin of how this came around is definitely my favorite story on this list because it's super, super random. The design came from the co-founder of Chevy, William Durant, and there are a few conflicting details about the origin story, but the most widely accepted version comes from Durant himself. And it's awesome. The dude was vacationing in Paris and he saw that shape in a repeating pattern on the wallpaper in his hotel. So he vandalized the hotel, ripped a piece of the wallpaper down, brought it back to Detroit, and that became the Chevy logo. The prancing horse in the Ferrari logo is in honor of an Italian World War I fighter pilot. Uh, he had a prancing horse painted on the side of his plane. The yellow in the logo represents the hometown color of Enzo Ferrari. He grew up in Modena or Modena or Modena, that, that place right there. The three stripes up top, that's the Italian flag. And some of the Ferrari logos have a little script S and a little script F. And that stands for Scuderia Ferrari, which was Enzo Ferrari's racing team. Believe it or not, the Ford logo is not at all based on Henry Ford's signature. It's just about the laziest design story on the list. <clears throat> <clears throat> Subscribe. To boxcar. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> there we go. 
Henry asked his chief engineer and designer, a dude named Mr. Wills, to design a logo for him. And I assume Mr. Wills had other things to do because he just recycled the font that he used on his own personal business cards. And a lot of people think that there's a hidden lowercase e in the F of the logo, but there's not. It was just something that his calligrapher did. Honda. It's an H. Stands for Honda. That's, that's about it. Uh, but what is unique about the logo is that it's a Japanese company that first sold their vehicles exclusively in Japan, and they chose to use the Western alphabet instead of the Japanese script. The Hyundai logo looks like another H, but italicized. However, if you ask Hyundai, it's not an H. It's two people shaking hands. I gotta be honest, I don't, I don't see that at all. It's an H. I have no idea why the logo for Infinity isn't the actual symbol for Infinity, and instead they chose to go with a symbol that represents a road going off over the horizon into Infinity. Which, okay, yeah, all right, that makes that makes more sense probably, but. To me, it also kind of looks like an O and an A, or an A and an O, or a sideways metal Pac-Man. I like Jeeps, I really do, but they have the laziest design team in the history of design teams. The only products that have evolved slower than the Jeep is like the Converse All-Star and a book of matches. So it's not a big surprise that their logo is literally just, it's the word Jeep, that's it. They didn't even put an oval around it. And again, I like Jeeps. I really do. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. As long as you can completely ignore our dynamics. Lexus logo is, uh, it's just an L. Yellow circle in the Lotus logo is, I guess, supposed to be the sun. And then that green triangular shape on the inside is a random shape, but the color isn't. That's British racing green and that random stack of letters that's all piled on top of each other are the initials of the founder of Lotus and the Formula One legend Colin Chapman whose full name was Anthony Colin Bruce Chapman. Now he had business partners at Lotus called the Allen Brothers and he actually lied to them and said that the A and the B stood for Allen Brothers which is pretty funny. Maserati's logo is a trident, and there's two different stories as to how the trident came to be. The first is that the founder's favorite character in the movie Little Mermaid was Poseidon, and he loved Poseidon's big stick fork thingy. The other version, which I personally find kind of ridiculous, is that there's a famous statue of Neptune holding a trident in the Piazza Maggiore in Bologna, where Maserati was founded, and the founder of Maserati used that as inspiration. Seems kind of ridiculous, but who knows? I don't think we'll ever know which, which version of the story is correct. <laughs> Mazda logo is an M, but it's not just an M. That V part in the middle are upswept wings because Mazda can br bring you to new heights or something. The Mercedes logo is a three-pointed star and it's something that the founder's dad used to doodle on postcards. Mitsubishi logo is super cool because the word Mitsubishi describes the logo itself. So Mitsubishi is a fusion of two Japanese words. The first is Mitsu, which means three, and the second one is Hishi, which means uh, water chestnut. But it can also mean rhombus. And Mitsuhishi means three rhombuses or rhombi, three rhombi. Three rhombus, rhombi, whatever. The Mitsubishi logo is three rhombusai. Mitsubishi. The Porsche logo is funny because it's completely fake. It's a made up family crest. And it's a combination of three different things. Stuttgart, which is where Porsche is headquartered. Uh, Wittenberg, which is the state that Stuttgart's in. And I know I'm pronouncing it wrong and I apologize. And the third thing is Swabia, which is where the Porsche family has a second house. Subaru is the Japanese name of a constellation, and the logo is just that constellation. Subaru. 
Elon Musk is the founder of Tesla, and he's a really quirky dude. He's got a weird sense of humor. He actually tried to name the Tesla cars the S, the E, and the X, because he thought it would be funny, uh, which, to be here, that would have been pretty funny. So I wouldn't have been surprised to find out that the Tesla logo is like John Travolta's tuxedo from Saturday Night Fever, or a diagram of the female reproductive system, but it's not. It's, it's pretty lame, actually. It's a uh, stator and a rotor, which are two key components of an electric motor, which makes sense, but it's pretty lame. The Toyota logo is probably my favorite. Its nickname is The Bug, and it's really thought out. It's also got some like Da Vinci Code level symbolism in it. So the two perpendicular ovals that intersect in the middle obviously form a T, but they represent to the company the mutually beneficial relationship and trust between the company and their consumer. And the ovals have different thickness around them, similar to the brush art that's common in Japanese culture. And coolest of all, you can spell the word Toyota in the logo, T-O-Y-O-T-A. Toyota. <laughs> the VW logo is, uh, well, it's a V on top of a W. And the V is Volks and the W is Wagen. So it's, it's Volkswagen. That's it. Volvo is the last logo that I'm gonna do, and it's got a pretty funny story. It's probably the weirdest and most misunderstood logo in cars. Uh, growing up, I didn't know why they had Austin Powers necklace uh, on their grill. The symbol represents the male gender to like everybody. And I did a little research and the origin of that is Greek. It symbolizes the shield and spear of their god of war, a dude named Mars. Named a planet after him. They also named a candy bar after the planet, but that's irrelevant, so never mind. It doesn't make sense to me why a Scandinavian car manufacturer who specializes in building safe, reliable family cars would slap the dude logo on their grill. Just seems kind of unwoke. Well, as it turns out, that's not what they intended to do at all. Because if you're involved in metal manufacturing or chemistry, then obviously... That's not the male symbol. That's the old school abbreviation for the chemical element iron, which makes a lot more sense when Volvo, again, built his reputation on building these ironclad strong vehicles. So it represents something very cool in that context, but I'm not completely sure why they chose a symbol that means something completely different to basically every person who's not a chemist or an iron worker. All right, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. Um, I really, really have a lot of fun doing these, and I cannot possibly tell you how much I appreciate every view, every comment, every new subscriber. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe uh, and keep an eye out for uh, more stuff coming soon.